Hi guys and welcome back to English Harmony video blog. I'm Robbie, your English fluency mentor. And in this video we're going to look at the following English collocation. May have been led to believe that. And uh, at the first glance it may seem like a very very complicated grammar construct, something that you you can hardly wrap your head around, right? Wrap your head around another expression meaning to understand basically, right? But the trick is you have to repeat it a good few times, may have been led to believe that, may have been led to believe that, may have been led to believe that, and so on and so forth. Use it in your daily spoken English practice sessions and then eventually it becomes walk in the park. You don't even have to think about how complicated it is. It just comes out of your mouth in a single go, simply because you've memorized it. That's the key to true English fluency, my friends. And I'm not going to go down the road of analyzing this particular sentence. May have been led to believe that to try and figure out which grammar tense it actually is. It serves no purpose, my friends. Serves no purpose. Another collocation. You see, English language is packed full with collocations, phrases, expressions, and that's how you attain fluency, attain fancy language achieve a little bit uh, uh, more simple way of putting the same thing, right? Basically, by learning all these expressions, you achieve fluency, and this one may have been led to believe that is quite a useful one, which is used in situations such as, but if you really want to find out when it's used, and if you really want to be able to use it on your own, please bear with me for a few more minutes and you'll find it all out, my friends. Hello and welcome back. So, may have been led to believe that. Here's a typical example sentence, right? My dear friend, you may have been led to believe that English grammar studies is what you need in order to become a fluent English speaker. But in reality, nothing could be further from the truth. <laughs> the second part, nothing could be further from the truth is actually also a valid English expression, right? But uh, this time around, this time around, another expression, I can't help myself. Help myself, I can't help myself. Another expression, Jesus Christ, I can't, I really can't help myself using all expressions, but it just goes to show, just goes to show another expression. Oh, my, my friends, I, I hope you can see now, I hope you can clearly see the efficiency uh, the, the advantages of using all these expressions. Once you learn them, once you acquire them, your speech becomes fluent just naturally. You don't even have to think too much, right? All these phrases basically insert themselves when the right situation presents itself. Right situation presents itself. Another expression, right? I can clearly remember seeing it in my table. That's right in front of me, right? My Excel spreadsheet where I'm keeping all these expressions. It's got uh, a couple thousand now and uh, the way I list them is I write blog posts and whenever I come across a very valid collocation of phrase I just put it into the Excel sp uh, spreadsheet, right? And uh, basically I'm straying off the subject now my friends. Let's go back to the example sentence. You, may, you may have been led to believe that English grammar is what you need, but nothing could, could be further from the truth, right? So you use this expression, you may have been led to believe that when something that you probably believe, something that the other person probably believes is not actually true, right? And then you tell the other person, listen, you may have been led to believe that something is a certain way, but in reality, it's quite the other way around, right? So it always, almost always follows with the other part of the sentence, beginning with the word but. Basically, you may have been led to believe that English grammar is what you need, but it's not the case. Or however. So basically, 
the other part of the sentence always contradicts the first one. And uh, in this case, uh, it's, it's totally true. We all foreigners who are struggling with, the, with our fluency initially were led to believe that English grammar is what, what we need. And therefore, we spent years upon years trying to perfect our English grammar only to find out in the end that we can't speak at all. Right? So you may, we may have been led to believe. And in case you're wondering why this particular way of putting it may have been led, why can't you say that just you were led to believe? Well, you can say that and you'll be understood just as well. It's just that this particular way of saying it, you may have been led to believe, it kind of it's the best way of putting it. That's the way native English speakers speak, right? You, you should stop your analysis right there and then. You shouldn't try and figure out why exactly such things are said. And in case you have that type of mentality whereby you question everything, you may just uh, read this article, right? Which will address that issue and probably convince you not to ask these why questions too often because it's detrimental to your fluency, right? So, uh, if I were asked the question why this particular sentence is, is put this way, may have been led to believe. Maybe it's because uh, you don't want to be accusing the other person. You don't want to be telling them straight into their face, listen, what you believe is wrong. You want to be polite about it, right? So, you tell them, listen, you may have been led to believe. It's, it's, not, a, it's not so strict. It's a possibility that that person was probably told the wrong, wrong thing, right? Probably led to believe something. And uh, obviously, you know that it's that you're in the right. You know that that person was definitely led to believe into something that's not right. But you don't tell them, listen, that's not right. Because that's not the best way of uh, going about convincing someone. If you... If you're trying to persuade someone with an argument that believe that starts with listen that's wrong or that's right, people will more often than not actually have a have quite the opposite reaction. People will become defensive. But if you tell them listen, you may have been led to believe that English grammar is 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 the right thing, is is the way forward when uh, acquiring English fluency, but in reality it's not really the case, you know. In that, in that case, the person will more likely start thinking about it, right? And here's another example. We all may have been led to believe that the food pyramid is the way forward, that it's the only way uh, an average person's nutritional balance should be constituted, right? You base your nutrition on uh, on wheat and bread based products and then follows meat and dairy and so on and so forth. I'm pretty sure you're quite familiar with the food pyramid but in reality a lot of people say that food pyramid simply reflects the industry. All the different food industries which have their vested interests in, in, in governments, right? And vested interest means something that uh, benefits them, right? So all food industries have vested interest in the, in the government uh, plans, economy plans, and so on and so forth. And that's why government policies actually reflect these industri industries produce, products, right? What they supply is what the government tells us that we should eat. But it's not necessarily the healthiest way of eating, right? Obviously, it's way healthier than just living off junk food, right? The thing is that we may have been led to believe that the food pyramid is the way, is the only way forward. Well, in reality, it's just reflecting the, the food industry supply. They're basically telling us what to eat so that they can sell us all those products, right? And there are other alternative ways of eating, alternative diets, in essence. 
And uh, the one that springs to my mind is the, the paleo diet, which is uh, a recent phenomenon, but it's, it's got huge worldwide following at the moment. And basically, it's all based on eliminating any grain-based products from your diet. And it, might, it may sound very controversial, and some people will say, listen, bread is good, and it's one of your staples, and you, we should all be eating it, because everyone knows it's good, right? But it's just that we may have been led to believe that it is good from an early age and we don't even question it, right? But it's about time we wake up and start questioning things, right? Anyway, I hope that by now you have a clear picture of how this particular English collocation may have been led to believe that is used. And I warmly suggest you do your own practice sessions whereby you try and uh, stick this larger phrase into context on your own just come up with something if you struggle with it write it down first you may want to read this article about it right if you struggle to do spoken english practice spontaneously write it down first and then you'll definitely find it much much easier to do it right and uh, repeat it a good few times may have been led to believe that may have been led to believe that and uh Eventually, it'll just come out of your mouth just like that, without much thinking, without any grammar analysis whatsoever, right? And I hope you enjoy this video, my friends. Any questions, comments, please post them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.